The short answer is no. Hey Booktube, it's Kim in middle of the book march and today's video is a chatty video. It's funny because I was thinking about uh, my midweek video, like what am I going to talk about? And I have a notebook that I keep with like video ideas and little notes here and there. I don't know where I put it. And I had a big page and a half of video <laughs> ideas and I couldn't think of anything too original. So this came to me out of the blue and well, maybe not out of the blue. I kind of got thinking about this topic of money in booktube based on just watching booktube and there's so there's so many different types of booktubers and i was noticing things like where they sit when they film and what if they have books behind them and uh if they do book hauls often and also if i knew what they did for work so it was like i started to think about that and i started to think about uh, comments that i often get in my comment list under my videos and just section. just um you know different things that people have said whether for whatever reason or from whatever walk of life they're at i've had many comments from people who say they're retired or they're on a fixed income they don't buy a lot of books based on affordability they go to the library and I started to think about this topic and I thought, you know what, let's talk about it online. So I was thinking about, do you need money to booktube? Yes, I use booktube as a verb. Do you need to have money to be a booktuber? And the short answer is no, it, you don't. You absolutely don't. When I started my channel, I didn't, I'm not wealthy by any means. I don't have a professional job. I am in an operations administration person in an office, uh, nothing spectacular. You know, we live in a small home. So I am, yeah, I'm definitely fortunate in a lot of different ways, but I have to budget and I have to watch my pennies and I have to watch what I spend. And yeah, I do have some disposable income, but as fortunate as I am, I don't need any of that to be a booktuber. So let's, let's start by talking about the physical stuff, the equipment. Do you need to buy fancy equipment? Absolutely not. I have always used my phone. And when I started, when I started my channel, I was using my phone propped up on whatever I could figure out. I had it propped up on a pile of books. I had it propped up on a box of some sort. Eventually, I shelled out $20 for a cheap tripod that I could adjust so I could have it stand on the floor or have it stand on a table. I use a different tripod now because that one broke after a couple of years. <laughs> I even used it while it was broken. But the one I use now is actually a selfie stick that converts into a tripod and I think it cost me $30. So in four years, I've spent $55 on equipment. And honestly, you don't need a tripod. It's just really convenient and it makes things a lot easier. So that's all the equipment I've ever purchased. I actually did buy a lapel mic for $6 years ago when I first started and I stopped using it. I don't know, it was $6. So it was probably doesn't, wasn't gonna last very long anyway. And it just didn't, it didn't make my sound any better. So I stopped using it. And that's it. I think most of us at this point, if you want to make videos, you already have a smartphone. Just about any smartphone will take a video. And the quality of the video does not have to be 110%. It really doesn't. Your sound is important, but you don't have to have this high priced equipment. I do know many booktubers who with a lot of subscribers will have a dedicated camera just for filming videos. So they're not using their phones. That's fine. But I told myself very early on, I was not going to buy any high priced equipment unless I can support myself by doing booktube full time. And let's face it, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I, I'm realistic. I know myself, it's not gonna happen. 
So that's my, that's my equipment. What do I, how do I edit the videos? Do I have to buy a program? I do not. I have an iPhone and with iPhones comes iMovie. It's a free program on the phone. That's how I edit my videos. There's nothing too creative. I don't have a lot of special effects. I don't do a lot of extra stuff. And you might see a cattail appear in the video. I'm trying to hold him back. No, go, go away, buddy. I can't hold you right now. He wants to get on my lap. Sorry. So I don't have any, I don't do any fancy things in my videos, so I don't need fancy equipment. And over the years, I have changed phones, and I went from an iPhone to an and no, I started with an Android, I went to an iPhone. The video taking on an iPhone is so easy, and it's so easy to learn how to edit on iMovie. But then, for whatever reason, I went back to an Android phone because I got a great deal, and it was painful. It was painful. I don't know why it's so much different, but I couldn't edit without getting so frustrated and that just simply was not worth it to me. So I, I handed that phone down to my husband and I went back to an iPhone. I, it, takes me, it takes me about the same amount of time to edit as it does to film. So if, I've, if this video goes 15 minutes, it, it'll take me about that long to edit. It's, it's super simple and I don't, I don't get really fancy. So I have a phone anyway, I'm gonna use it. What else? Do you have to own a bunch of books to be a booktuber? No, no, um, no. I do. I own a bunch of books, I, but I always have. And I think that's part of why I wanted to be a booktuber because I've always had books. I love having books in my home. I love owning the books and holding a physical book in my hand. I love that. I always have. Do I have a lot of books? Yes. The, now, the, this is the most, the amount of books I have is the most I've ever had in my life at any one time. And I don't really think I'm going to get many more than I already own. And I actually unhauled uh, a few hundred books recently. So I'm not going to go back and refill that empty space. I have space up here. I could fill it pretty easily. I'm not going to do that. I, just because I don't want to. I unhauled for a reason. Do I have to own all these books to be on booktube? No. I could be filming in front of a blank wall. And I, I've seen booktubers do it for a long time. It doesn't matter. I've seen booktubers film in bed. I've seen booktubers film on their couch with nothing behind them. It doesn't matter if you own a bunch of books. And it doesn't matter if you have bookcases filled with books. Um, Honestly, because I do, because I've always owned books, it just makes sense to film in front of them on my booktube channel. But there have I have had videos that I haven't been sitting in front of my books. So there's no requirement to own books. What do you do if you don't own books that, and you want to be a booktuber? You read from the library. You read ebooks. You read books from library sales. I'm going to show you a small pile in a second. You buy books, um, if, you love, if you love to own books, there's so many ways to buy cheap books. You can frequent a local used bookshop. I, I had one closed down in the last year, but I do have a couple more that I do frequent and I find deals all the time. Um, I find library sales and I've bought books for 50 cents. I do love to own books, so I am going to find my bargains. But you don't have to own anything. You can read specifically from the library. You can read ebooks from the library. You can subscribe to a, a service and listen to all the audiobooks you can consume. So if, if you want to subscribe to anything. And that it's really simple. Um, when I first came onto BookTube, I started watching a lot of videos about consumerism, book, BookTube and consumerism. And, you know, all of these booktubers doing massive book hauls and the amount of books that people had in back of them. And booktube in general, I would not say is consumerist. And just because I like to buy books doesn't mean I'm 
materialistic or I'm consuming things. Uh, I am very thrifty when I buy books. And a lot of the books I unhauled, I brought, I exchanged for store credit and I still have a $28 credit. I bought $14 worth of books. I got like eight books and didn't spend all of my credit. So that's kind of the, the tricks that I use to buy books that I want to own for a long time at very, very low prices. Um, I'm going to show you a few examples of books that I've bought or received for zero to little money. My mother-in-law gave me this copy of Peyton Place by Grace, Grace Metallius. Um, it's a hard, hard scrabble books. Peyton Place. This is an older novel. Um, let's see. This was published back in 1956. So, and it's a, it's like a brand new, like reprinted copy. But I was at their house for Thanksgiving and she said, have you ever read Peyton Place? I said, no, but I would love to. And she said, here you go. And she just gave me the book. She's a person that reads books and then gives them away. She doesn't really hold on to a lot of books. She's a great friend to have <laughs> because she will give you books. So I got Peyton Place from her for free. And I bought this book at a thrift shop. Near me, I have two Goodwells and a thrift store. This one I found at the thrift store and I believe it was $2.99. That's, you know, that's a lot more than I would normally pay at a library sale, but it was a book in great condition and I really wanted to read it. And this is Old Filth by Jane Gardam. I loved this book. I read it and I have since purchased her subsequent novels after this one. I believe all used. I love buying used books because it doesn't, I don't need to consume a new book and I'm buying a book that's already out there. So it doesn't need to be recycled or discarded. So Old Filth was about $2.99. In my pile, this is the most expensive book that I bought. This one is um, The Revolutionary Samuel Adams by Stacey Schiff. I bought this at a library sale for a dollar. And this, I don't know if it was ever read. It was published in 2022. It's a brand new book, nonfiction. And this was at my local library sale um, this last spring. It was, yeah, it was in the spring. I think it was March or April that I bought this book, a dollar. And this one, this is a book that I read in my real life book group, The Critical Chicks. And I read it originally on my Kindle. And what I, what I often do, and I've, I've seen other booktubers say the same thing on their videos, if they read a book on their Kindle and just adore it, then they will f go out and find a physical copy to keep on their shelves. I do the same thing. And this is the perfect example. I read this on my Kindle for book group. I loved it. I think we all loved it. And then I was at a library sale that I frequent often because they have it like the last Saturday of every month, but then they have two, I'm, I'm rambling. Then they have two library sales through the year, like big library sales. But I saw this one, it's a brand new, brand new condition, hardcover. It's A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. I absolutely loved this book. And when I read it on my Kindle, I bought this for 50 cents at the library sale, brand new. Nobody had ever read it. It was a donated book, not a former library copy. And um, this is a book I'll reread, but I just loved it. And 50 cents, I've bought books for 50 cents that I've since unhauled. And it's like, you know what? I spent 50 cents on it and somebody else will find it and enjoy it. So that's kind of my conversation about, you don't need to be rich and you don't need to have a lot of money to be a booktuber. You don't have to, um, come up with a bunch of cash to booktube as a verb. Now, that leads me into my latest housekeeping point. If you've noticed, I have monetized lately. And what I'm, why have I monetized? I, I went this long, I went almost four years without monetizing, why now? Honestly, it's been four years. And you know, it's a little tiny bit of extra money. Since I monetized a few weeks ago, I think my revenue is $6. <laughs> So I am never going to be able to support myself from BookTube. But YouTube doesn't pay you until you until you get $100 total. It could take me months to get $100 in ad revenue. 
But I thought, you know, I'm going to do it because it's a, it's a little extra money. What I don't want to do is I don't want to put ads in the middle of my videos. And you, you can make that setting on YouTube so there's no mid-roll ads. That's what they're called. But yes, I did monetize, so there's ads in the beginning of my videos. I have had a couple comments, and I have had a person or two unsubscribe. There may be more. I don't know. Um, but And that's okay. I get it. But that's my choice, and that's what I've done to my channel, and I'm perfectly happy about it. So that's it about being rich and or having a bunch of money to be a booktuber. It's not necessary. Um, I may have missed a couple points I wanted to talk about, but I think I hit everything pretty well. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.